Good morning and welcome to 89.3 Lakes FM, 89.3 WBLD Orchard Lake. My name is Dave Scott. He is Tyler Keefe. Good morning, Tyler. Good morning, Dave. Well, thank you for uh, joining us here. And uh, what what are we doing? Well, first of all, this is the Megacast for Thursday. What, what's, what's today's date? Today is March 19th. <laughs> okay, Dave. Thursday, March 19th, the Megacast. What is a Megacast? It's kind of a new thing that we're doing here at Civic Center TV and Lakes FM. We are live right now on 89.3 Lakes FM. We're live also in the audio stream at lakesfm.com. We're live on Civic Center TV, WBTV, and all of our TV outlets. So Civic Center TV is on channel 15 Comcast, channel 99 AT&T. And then you can also watch us live on the internet at civiccentertv.com, video player in the upper right-hand corner. In fact, we, we can show you this today because uh, we have this whole new apparatus here. I'll show you in a minute. But uh, uh, that's what we're doing. And, of course, with the coronavirus and so much happening every day, both nationally and here locally, there are so many issues to get to. Uh, we're going to get through all of them today. But every day in the show... To make the megacast even bigger, we are going to have a partner who is going to bring some new information to us, but in addition, also allow us to stream our megacast on their Facebook page. And our partner today is West Bloomfield Township Clerk Debbie Binder. Uh, Good morning, Debbie. How are you? Good morning, Tyler. Good morning, Dave. Well, thank you for joining us. Good to have you here on the Megacast today. Thank you for being a part of it. And and a huge thank you for also allowing us to uh, broadcast this on the clerk's Facebook page. It's, it's, uh, and we're happy to have you there. We are, really are. All right. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. We really appreciate it. And uh, how are things going over at Town Hall? You know, we're closed to the public, so on one end it's been quiet, but there's obviously, you know, this is their concerning and disruptive times for everyone, and it's no different here at Town Hall. All right. So, um, so hang it. Forgive me for interrupting. Hang in there for one second. I got just a little bit more business to take care of, and and uh, we're going to get right back to you. Sorry to cut you off. I apologize. Uh, okay. t- Tyler, an yes. awful lot going on this morning. So, in addition to talking to Debbie, who we'll get back to in a couple of minutes, we uh, are going to talk to um, Dee Sloan, a Sylvan Lake resident, who's come up with some really interesting ways to spend time together with people in a safe way. Yeah, it's really tough, we found, to socialize normally or, or, in, or as close to normally as possible during the pandemic while also maintaining a safe distance and she's come up with a real or she's involved with a really interesting way to keep the community communicating with one another uh, while keeping at a safe distance. Okay, we'll also check in today with Pastor Tim Hoserlin, the Shepherd King Lutheran Church uh, pastor and also the fire department chaplain and find out, you know, what are his parishioners doing to keep in touch with uh, everyone in their parish. We'll talk to Mayor Aaron Lorenz of Sylvan Lake. He will check in. Debbie Binder will be the, with us. Our own Harvey Gerson, uh, who is the uh, chairperson of the Greater West Bloomfield Cable Communications Commission, will check in and we'll talk about some issues. And we're going to get back to Debbie on this in a minute, but it's really going to be an interesting day because we have two municipal meetings going on today, one in West Bloomfield, one in Kego Harbor, and yesterday at four o'clock, the governor passed new laws allowing these meetings to happen virtually. So uh, that's what's going to happen in Kego. We'll talk to Debbie here in a minute and find out what's going to be happening in West Bloomfield. And then we are also all hooked up today to uh, talk about Zoom. And we've got our Zoom experts, Ken Cooper, back at the Motown Digital Offices. And I believe that we, uh, we, we've we got uh, some folks here, too, that we're going to connect to, right? We do. All right, John Atwater here. And, and we're going to show you how Zoom works live on the Megacast and just find out more about what's going on and, and maybe a little bit about how tonight's meeting is going on. So that's kind of the overview. Debbie Binder, wow, that's an awful lot going on today, huh? It has been busy, and, and you know, as much as we're closed, like I said to the public, we have been busy at Town Hall getting uh, things that need to get done, done as well as planning for the meeting that we're having today, and we do have a board meeting on Monday, and now with the new executive order, we're going to be looking at how that meeting on Monday takes place. So uh, today you're going to be talking about how to deal with this crisis, how to deal with emergencies um, going forward, and maybe some uh, new ways to be able to 
implement action quickly without requiring the entire township board to meet. Is that what's on your agenda today? Well, there's uh, there are a whole bunch of things on the agenda today. We're, we're looking at how to best deliver services for as long as possible, yet recognizing the, the situation right now and taking into account the emergency orders that are coming forward. As a creature of the state and a, as a township, we really do take direction from the state and we are following along with what the governor says and what kind of orders are coming out. So that is a new order as of last night that will allow us to meet remotely. And it literally came out last evening, so I don't know exactly how we're going to apply it yet, but that's something that will be discussed at this afternoon's meeting. And something that's also being discussed uh, on a state level and also also on a national level is the impact that this pandemic is going to be having on elections. Uh, what are yes. some of the factors that go into elections that are that are going to be impacted other than the the obvious ones like how do people go to the polls safely and submit their votes safely and uh, what are some of the other ways that elections are being impacted by this coronavirus pandemic well one of the things we're dealing with right now is we have an election scheduled for may 5th the two um, school districts that are holding elections are having emergency meetings one this evening and one friday morning to discuss whether they're going to continue with their, they have been given an opportunity to, to wait to postpone their election or to re, re, you know, recall their election. They will be meeting to make those decisions. But the verdict from the state right now is if there are any elections that take place, they will be 100% mail-in and done by absentee ballot, which sounds like a great solution. However, we still have, you know, in minimizing person-to-person -person contact, However, we still have to convene an absent voter counting board to count what would likely be an increased number of absentee ballots by, it, by nature of those ballot applications being sent to everybody. So West Bloomfield, we have fewer precincts that are affected by this May election, but our neighbors, you remember, we're all talking about that it's not just all about us right now. And our neighbors in Bloomfield Township would have 11 precincts that are affected, and our neighbors in Waterford would have 20 precincts that are affected. And they would likely have to get, to get absent voter counting boards of 50 to 70 people convening in one room in a sequestered room, and that's going to be very challenging right now in the current climate. Yeah, people don't seem, just on a, on a basic level, don't really know how much goes into making elections work in regular times. And, and so in these unprecedented times, it's also going to be impacted and uh, elections are going to have to also change to continue on and, and still be effective. Yes. And I think that that's what some, you know, some of they're coming to terms with. And we watched in Ohio the other day a unique situation where the governor canceled the election. They were sued and a judge stopped it. But then the Department of Health came in and said, no, there's not going to be an election. So again, as a township, we're a creature of the state. Our, our you know, f framework is defined by state law. So we take our direction from the state, and we're all watching what the governor says and what the county says to take direction. But ultimately, as far as elections go, it is the governor's decision. And you also have a, your son, Ross, at home too, Debbie. How, how is his education and, and your work as a working mother being impacted by this coronavirus pandemic? You know, Tyler, it's a good question, and I do want to give a shout-out to every parent. We have parents here at Town Hall, and every parent I know who's trying to work and be a parent and suddenly be a homeschooled teacher. And I think you all know that my background is I was a teacher, and I do have a master's in teaching. Um, however, it's a lot different when you're homeschooling your own child and trying to work you know, full-time as well. So I think that parents have to be very forgiving of themselves because it's hard to do everything well. Um, I, I just had a conversation with a mother at town hall this morning that feels like her children are, are orphans right now. And in many ways, I feel like Ross is raising himself because I do need to be at town hall. I am trying to find a way to make more time to be a parent as well and assure that his education is being handled. Fortunately, he's a fairly self-directed kid, but it still isn't without challenges. So I respect every single parent who is trying to find that balance and, and know that it's it's hard. I, I'm experiencing it, and I know others are experiencing it with even less flexibility. So, the you know the most I can say is we're all in this together, and urge parents to be forgiving of themselves. Do the best you can, kids. I remember when I was teaching third grade, my co-teacher who had taught for many years said to me at the end of the year when I was panicking about what we hadn't covered, she said they're learning in spite of you, and I think I have to remind myself of that right now. He's learning in spite of me. 
and I'm doing the best I can. You're doing, so you're doing, are. you're doing a great job, Debbie Binder. West Bloomfield Township Clerk Debbie Binder on the line. Debbie, let me salute you. You're really one of the most prolific social media elected officials we have in our four communities. We love what you do online. You're always working and pushing things out to Facebook and Twitter and all the different environments. And and we especially uh, want to thank you for allowing us to uh, put the broadcast on your Facebook page today. Day, in addition to all the other outlets that are part of the mega cast so uh, thank you very much we, we no, appreciate that pleasure. you did a great job so if it's you're a, just it's a great way to meet people to reach people so i'd <laughs> well, like to be part of it well it is and especially right now debbie binder uh, tyler keith it it's really important that we are doing everything we can to keep in touch with each other so and it's not just uh taking care of your kids in school it it's trying to get Food and you know, I mean, going out. We can't go out to have a cocktail. We can't go out to uh, to get dinner or lunch and sit in a restaurant. There are a lot of other restrictions that are being imposed on us for good reason, but it's just making it a challenge. And you know, part of what we're going to do on the show here is just try to give people a helping hand. In fact, in a couple of minutes, Debbie, we're in, <laughs> let me know if this is okay. I, I think it'll be fun. We're going to send a Ryan Young love out with our remote broadcast equipment and have him go see if he can get some carry-out lunch for the whole crew. So um, are you hungry, Debbie? Should we drop off lunch for you, or you're all set? Oh, I think I'm good, but I appreciate the offer. I really do. So, I'm going to try to go home <laughs> and have a quick lunch with Ross, actually. That's what I've been trying to do. All right, so it'll be a lot of fun. One more thing before you go, the, and I noticed this on the way in and listening to some other broadcasts. Um, there. There's Tyler, there's a whole new vocabulary that is going on here, and I thought we would start to keep track of the uh, COVID-19 vocabulary, and there's all kinds of new expressions that are happening right now. Uh, first one, flatten the curve. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, fl- I mean we, did we ever say flatten the curve before the last week or so? If we have, we haven't said it really as regularly as we have lately, so I'm that's g- for sure. I'm going to put that right in the top of my list of my new uh, coronavirus vocabulary. Flatten the curve, and that uh, you you put a definition down here. We did some prep for the show. Oh, I yeah. see. Uh, society nice. making a concerned effort to slow the exponential spread of the virus, lowering the impact on the medical field to treat the disease, particularly severe symptoms requiring limited resources such as ventilators. What a clinical description. It's mm-hmm. vocabulary, Dave. you got to learn this. All right? got to study your vocabulary, Dave. Debbie, do you, I mean, we didn't warn you about this. Is there any new vocabulary that's coming to your lexicon of conversation and language that, uh, that we should add to our vocabulary list? I, I can't think of one per se, but I think even the flatten the curve in some ways is more of a conceptual vocabulary. And, it, and when you see that what they're trying to achieve, it's really clear to look at that curve and see that they're trying to not overtax the system because if they overtax the system, they were, were, they'd rather spread it out over a longer period and have it be a slower, you know, slower than having a spike that hits this healthcare system that they're not equipped to deal with. So I think it's a, it's a concept that they're looking for people to embrace. And I think anytime sometimes you put a slogan to something, it seems to infiltrate society a lot quicker. All right. So, so flatten the curve is number one on our absolutely. hit list on our top number ten one. here. Maybe these are, are uh, cliches rather than... Uh, Some vocabulary. Of are Maybe they're Some cliches, of terms, whatever. It's a couple scientific <laughs> terms down there. You'll see them later on. We'll, we'll, we'll tell you later. All right. On. Well, Debbie, thank you so much for being with us. Debbie Binder, West Bloomfield Township Clerk. Anything to add before we run along? No, I just appreciate again. I know that you've been working really hard with 89.3 and making sure Civic Center TV as well as helping spread the word because we do have, you know, 66,000 residents that do want to get information. So appreciate everything you do toward that end. We're going to have that meeting this afternoon and hopefully make decisions on, on, on the services we can provide. And it just takes, I think if, if at any point in our history we find out how important it is to have that village in place helping, and you are definitely an important and integral part of that village. Well, thank you very much. You're very kind. Plus, I re- it was really cool when I called you last night, and right out of the box you said, well, I'm really looking forward to the mega cast tomorrow. I mean, you're already, <laughs> we add oh. that to the vocabulary, add mega to the cast. Vocabulary. Oh, yeah. Now we can. We yeah. can put that on the list. <laughs> We can put that on the list. All right. Thank you, Debbie. And uh, we're just going to stay in your Facebook. We'll behave ourselves for the rest of the uh, the couple of hours here. Oh, yeah. All right? You promise? That I, sounds oh, good. I I pr- we're going to try to keep it entertaining, but we will behave ourselves. All right? 
Okay, sounds good. And thank you again for everything you do to keep our public informed. Thank, thank you, you, Debbie. Debbie Binder, oh. West Bloomfield Township Clerk, joining us right here on the Megacast. So, uh, the Megacast, 89.3 Lakes FM on the radio. We hope you're tuning in on the radio. Online at lakesfm.com. Civic Center TV, channel 15 on Comcast, channel 99 on AT&T, civiccentertv.com. And then you can go to the Facebook page of the West Bloomfield Township Clerk, and we are there today. Coming up in the next couple of minutes, we're going to go through the rest of these cliches. We'll talk a little bit about the governor's uh, ruling yesterday to open up meetings and make it easier for uh, us to hold interact and leave Eagle, the old interactive yeah. meetings. We'll talk about that. Our own Harvey Gerson, the uh, the chairperson of the Greater West Bloomfield Cable Communication Commission, will join us. It is Sunshine Week, and yes. that is a week that we make sure that government is open. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about making sure government is open, but it is accessible, and we're not hurting anybody. And when we come right back, we're going to do two other things. We're going to we're going to continue our vocabulary list and uh, and our cliche list, and we're going to check in with Ryan Younglove, who is uh, going to go get us lunch. He's going to try to get us some carry out lunch live on the radio today. Oh, yeah. We'll see how all that goes. All right, Dave Scott, Tyler Keefe on the Megacast. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. You are listening to Lakes FM at LakesFM.com and Civic Center TV on the Megacast Story Pack. Smoke alarms can save lives, but only if they work. They don't last forever and must be replaced according to the manufacturer's recommendations. If your smoke alarm has been in service for more than 10 years or is beyond the expiration date, then it should be replaced. So pay attention to those dates and please know that replacing outdated alarms today may save you and your family tomorrow. A public service message from the Michigan Bureau of Construction Codes. Did you know that the annual average temperature of the United States has increased by 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit over the period from 1901 to 2016? That may not sound a lot warmer, but think about the United States as you would your body. The average temperature of the body is supposed to be around 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Living with a temperature of 1.8 degrees warmer would mean living with an 100.4 degree fever at all times. <coughs> Over the next few decades, annual average temperatures are expected to rise by about 2.5 degrees Fahrenheit for the United States. Just like an untreated fever would negatively affect our bodies, rising temperatures will negatively affect the Earth. Go to eos.org to find out more about climate change. This message is brought to you by 89.3 Lakes FM and the WBHS Digital Media Arts Program. All right, 89.3 Lakes FM, the Megacast. Dave Scott along with Tyler Keefe. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, this is, of course, uh, our uh, expanded coverage of the COVID-19 crisis, the uh, coronavirus crisis here in West Bloomfield, doing all we can to localize this and provide you with information that is meaningful to uh, all of you here in West Bloomfield. Harvey Gerson of the Greater West Bloomfield Cable Communications Commission, our chairperson, checks in in a couple of minutes. We'll talk about what the governor ruled yesterday and open meetings during this uh, big day today as we have our first West Bloomfield Township board meeting happening live on Civic Center TV and right here on the radio at 2. And then Kego Harbor will be holding their meeting via Zoom. And we'll talk more about how all that's going to work a little bit later in our broadcast and get some of our Zoom experts on the line with us. Uh, I'm already getting, you getting hungry at all, Tyler? I'm a little hungry, to be honest with you. You know, it's a little er it's a little early for lunch, but you know what? Everybody is going to be going out, getting their carry out in, in town pretty soon. So might as well get on it early. All right. So we are going to make a concerted effort to do all we can to help our businesses here in the greater West Bloomfield area uh, during this crisis. And we're going to start with restaurants. I mean, it seems to me like a good place to start. So <laughs> we're going to start with restaurants. Uh, have you done the carry out food thing yet? I have I have not since uh, the man since not the mandate necessarily, but the uh, trend has moved to carry out okay. for safety. But before that, I, I had done it a couple times in the very beginnings of this. All right. So uh, we, I believe if I uh, turn that button on right there, we should have our own Ryan Younglove in the field. Ryan, are you there? Yes, I am, Dave. How's it going? Good, good. So you got the remote broadcast equipment all hooked up and uh, figured out? 
Yes, sir. I'm here. Okay. Ryan is still in our office, to be honest. But, Ryan, you're going to jump in your car in a little bit and uh, go get us some carryout for lunch, and we'll do the whole thing live on the radio. What do you think about that? Seems like a plan. All right, Tyler, do, where are we sending Ryan today? Uh, we, have a, we have a list of a few places he's going to try and just uh, – Check and see what's available, and uh, who, who wants to talk to us on the radio? So <laughs> we're going to call. Questions. We're going to we're going to call a, a restaurant, call in the order before he goes. Or are we just going to send him out there? Uh, we're going to we're going to call them before he goes out there, just to make sure that they're okay being on the radio, of course, and all that. And then we'll go out there and pick up an order. All right, all right. So um, okay, so Ryan, uh, are you hungry? Always. Okay. Yeah, I assume you want the boss's oh, yeah. credit card before you go, right? Oh yeah. All right. Well, good. Well, I wanted to check in with you, Ryan Younglove, our man in the street today, Ryan Younglove, uh, checking in, and he will be getting us uh, lunch live on the radio. And, Tyler, what I'm really interested in doing is in promoting restaurants here. So you can share on the air. you got a list of some people that we might go get food from. What? Who do you have? Yeah, we actually, uh, this is a courtesy of a, Ke- of a Kegel Harbor resident who made a great post on Facebook yesterday in the in the Kegel Harbor City Group about all these restaurants locally that are open during this. So we've got a few places. Uh, if you're into more of a healthy style, Juice and Smoothie Bar, Evolved Juice and Smoothie Bar in Kegel Harbor. Uh, there's other staples like the Lodge, uh, Harbor Steakhouse, Tony's Deli. Uh, we'll probably try the, the Lodge or Tony's Deli. We'll probably try the Early Bird Cafe. Mm. That's, that's a really great one. What do they have at the Early Bird Cafe? That's a lot. Well, they're particularly a breakfast restaurant, but they're fantastic. It's a, it's a small little kind of diner place right across the street. If you've never been there, right across the street from St. Mary's High School, uh, right on the fairgrounds where they usually will hold Sure, the yeah, yeah. It's a fantastic restaurant, so we may try Do you think we, so we can get breakfast, carry out breakfast from them yeah, for lunch? Yeah, they're open until about 3 o'clock, I, I I would say let's start with that. What do you think? I would think that's a, I think it's a great idea. I can get some low carb food and uh and we'll check it with ryan again so okay well when we take a break we'll call them and uh see if they're up for putting uh, meals together for our team here and uh we'll we'll see how it goes we'll send ryan out there and you can talk to the folks out there ladies and gentlemen this is not planned i I promise you this is very impromptu so um ruling yesterday afternoon that we ended up right in the middle of everything we were working on yesterday because we were trying to figure out how to get the Kego Harbor meeting on uh, and make it accessible to you. It's Sunshine Week, and the last thing we want to do is uh, is get in the way of our municipalities holding meetings. And I, I hope the folks in Kego don't mind me sharing this, but it got to the point yesterday where we were looking at. I mean, we looked at an option. Do we do it inside? Well, the you know, keeping people spaced out that might not work. Um, you know, do, can we do the online thing? Well, it, it, it was before four o'clock, Tyler, and and at that point we didn't have a ruling from the governor saying that we could actually do the whole thing virtually and at one point it got to the point where we were even discussing the possibility of holding a meeting outside and given the fact that it's rainy today uh that that was unfortunately at the time looking like the best option yeah, because you're trying to figure out a way that you can hold these meetings, engage the public in them, keep it open to the public, but also maintain social distancing, which is right. one of those words on our on our cliche vocabulary, slash we're gonna vocabulary get to yeah. list, uh, and make sure that we're keeping the public safe, but still broadcasting the meeting, keeping it open, and, and keeping a, a record of it as is legal. Speaking of social distancing, can you move over a little yeah, bit? You know, you're people, you're people, like getting very close to the six-foot rule over there. Get, far get, away get a little farther people away. Little, get over there. Yeah, in the that's, this is much more comfortable. Hang people, on a minute. Yeah, and then here, go. take some let's disinfectant yeah, so wipes just, and clean that up I'm over just, there. I'm just, I'm just All right. so, so disgusting. All 80, right. I'm just, I'm no, just we just want to follow the rules here. 89.3 Lakes FM, Civic Center TV, the Megacast. So let's go back to our vocabulary right now. So uh, flatten the curve. We kind of know what that is. We've seen that. We've seen the graphs on TV. I could bring one up here on the web uh, for you if you want, but uh, we'll get back to that in a little bit. Uh, here's a couple more. Social distancing, talking about what we were doing right now. Uh, I think we got to add that one to the list, right? Oh, absolutely. We have to add that one to the list. We just did some social distancing right here live on the air. So uh, that's very important as a method of making sure that 
people are at a distance where they're less likely to spread the virus to one another if they're carrying it. All right, you definitely put this list together. <laughs> of course I did. You want it to, you want vocabulary and definitions. I gave you I gave you All right, definitions. social distancing, maintaining a safe distance 6 feet or more from other people in an effort to reduce transmission of the virus to new people. Okay, here's the next one. Fomite transition yeah, from my transmission yep uh, all right so uh, you want to read this and oh sure i will read all that right. i will read that for you transmission of a virus from an object or a person that's carrying the virus uh, it's usually either on the surface or in their own system typically my transmission is done through the eyes the nose and the mouth which is one of the reasons why we're why society is being told don't touch your face all right good get those Disinfectant wipes back to work. Oh, yeah. Happy oh, birthday! Happy birthday song. I haven't heard this yeah. one. That is recommended song to sing twice. Oh, yeah. ensuring that you wash your hands for at least twenty seconds. That's more. That's more trivia than vocabulary. Uh, yeah, trivia. Okay, I'll add that to but the list. But it's a cliche too. Yeah. Asymptomatic. Uh, definitely oh, that's asymptomatic. Right there. Carrying infected uh, with a virus but not showing any symptoms. And pandemic, and I, I'll read your definition, an outbreak that is spread worldwide. So we want to keep this list right here and handy. And then anytime somebody says something that we need to, I got another one here. Uh, oh. I don't know the exact phrase, but it is. Give me um, a definition so well, I know the word. That's the, um, that the, the, the line that everyone says when they are making a decision to close something. The line that they all say, in an effort, it's like an extreme caution, or what's that line? It's the, uh, oh, neither of us are going to get it oh, now. Boy. This is going to be embarrassing. Oh, oh, you know, it's it's that line. In I a, got an excuse. I'm blind. <laughs> I'm that. In an effort, in, in an extreme sense of caution or something. I, we'll, we'll get the line. We've got to break. Someone will call us. Speaking of that, if you want to communicate with us today, we're still setting some things up. Uh, you can send email to Dave at CivicCenterTV.com. Or you can call our main office line at 248-683-2343. We would uh, enjoy your comments and thoughts. So um, this is the Megacast here on 89.3 Lakes FM and LakesFM.com. I'm Dave Scott. He's Tyler Keefe, and we thank you for joining us. We are also on Civic Center TV, Lakes FM, and the Facebook page for the West Bloomfield uh, Township Clerk's Office, Debbie Binder's Office. So thank you for tuning in to one of those many places. We'll be here every day. We broadcast the show each day live, Monday through Friday, from uh, 10 until noon, and then repeat it throughout the day. We have our Ryan Young Love out on the streets right now. Uh, soon we'll be getting us lunch. We're going to make a phone call. We'll do that after we take a break here in a minute. And then I believe we're going to check in with Harvey Gerson in a couple of minutes as well. The uh, executive, uh, not the executive director, but the chairperson of the Greater West. West Bloomfield Cable Communications Commission on this Sunshine Week as we have this new ruling of Get Ready for Meetings. So don't forget we have meetings today, 2 o'clock, West Bloomfield Township Board, live in Civic Center TV, and right here in Lakes FM. Now, that meeting is still open to the public. Town West Bloomfield Township Hall is closed. You can interact with the township via phone or the website and the other services, but they are going to open the doors today for you to come to the meeting. What they do for future meetings, yet to be determined, but that was set up before the ruling ruling yesterday at 4 o'clock. Kegel Harbor meeting tonight at 7. We're going to get on uh, the air via uh, Zoom, and uh, hopefully that will work out well. Um, we're going to, in fact, test that in a little bit. Also coming up in the next hour, we're going to talk, or this next half hour, we're going to talk to Dee Sloan, a Sylvan Lake resident who's come up with a really unique idea of how to socialize and do it in a very safe way during these very challenging times. So an awful lot coming up. Let's see, we got lunch, we got Dee Sloan, we've got Harvey Gerson, we got Orion Young Love, and uh, a whole lot more. So don't go away. Tyler, we got Tyler. We do. We got we got All Tyler right. and yours truly. So we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with more. Thank you very much for watching and tuning in to the Megacast right here on 89.3 Lakes FM, lakesfm.com, Civic Center TV, and civiccentertv.com. We will be right back. All right, everybody in the car. Let's go. What are we going to do first when we get there, Mom? Go for a hike? Sure. What about canoeing? Can we go canoeing, too? I don't see why. How long does it take to get to the forest? It's not that far, sweetie. <sighs> are we there yet? Yep, we're here. Already? It's a short drive from your neighborhood to your naturehood. 
Visit discovertheforest.org to find a neighborhood park or green space near you. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the U.S. Forest Service. Today in school, I learned a lot. In chemistry, I learned that no one likes me. In English, I learned that I'm disgusting. And in physics, I learned that I'm a loser. Today in school, I learned that I'm ugly and useless. And in gym, I learned that I'm pathetic and a joke. In history, I learned that I'm trapped. Today in school, I learned that I have no friends. In English, I learned that I make people sick. And at lunch, I learned that I sit on my own because I smell. In chemistry, I learned that no one likes In biology, I learned that I'm fat and stupid. And in math, I learned that I'm trash. The only thing I didn't learn in school today... The only thing I didn't learn today... The only thing I didn't learn... is why no one ever helps. Kids witness bullying every day. They want to help, but they don't know how. Teach them how to stop bullying and be more than a bystander at stopbullying.gov. A message from the Ad Council. The need for blood is constant and sometimes that need becomes critical. From accident victims and cancer patients to premature babies and those with blood disorders, hospital patients rely on all of us to make sure that blood is on the shelves and ready to help. That's why the American Red Cross needs you. Make an appointment to give blood today by calling 1-800-RED-CROSS or visit redcrossblood.org. Your one blood donation can save up to three lives. This has been a public service announcement from the American Red Cross and 89.3 WBLD, the all-new Lakes FM. Is that a faucet running? That's not a faucet. That's a river rushing through the forest. Forest rivers provide over 100 million people with clean water to drink. What? I can't hear you because of the vacuum. That's not a vacuum. That's the trees in the forest cleaning up the air we breathe. I didn't know the trees were so amazing. Yep, and the forest gives us shade, trees to climb. That's awesome. Let's go explore some more. Visit the forest today and enjoy all it does just for you. To learn more about the forest and find one near you, go to discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Civic Center TV is your home for everything Greater West Bloomfield. Here you can tune into community programming such as our weekly news magazine show, The Splash, as well as coverage of local events and meetings in Kegel Harbor, Sylvan Lake, Orchard Lake, and West Bloomfield. You can also watch all of your local programming online anytime at civiccentertv.com. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. 89.3 Lakes FM, lakesfm.com, Civic Center TV, civiccentertv.com, and uh, of course the West Bloomfield Township Clerk's Facebook page is where we are. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you very much for joining us. He is uh, Tyler Keith sitting over there on the other side of the studio. We appreciate uh, your efforts, Tyler. Been a lot of work putting all this together? Oh, yeah. It's, it's been fun, though. It's been fun, and uh, I, think, I think we're having a, a good time with the people of the community talking through this uh, pandemic scenario. So we are going to talk to Harvey Gerson, the uh, chairperson of the Greater West Bloomfield Cable Communications Commission, in, uh, in a moment. We're also going to check in with Dee Sloan of Sylvan Lake. She's got a unique way for people to gather during this uh, pandemic and just see how things are going in Sylvan Lake. Later on, we're going to talk to Sylvan Lake Mayor Aaron Lorenz, and, uh, and then we're going to talk to our Zoom experts in uh, in the next hour or so. We're actually going to get on Zoom and talk to them via Zoom because tonight, Tyler, we are going to do our Kegel Harbor meeting actually with Zoom. So we're going to we're gonna play around with it live here on the radio and on Civic Center TV. <laughs> Hopefully it'll all work. You know, and the best thing about me is I can really focus on what we can talk about what went on in the Kegel Harbor meeting tomorrow morning because I can take the, I can take notes because all I'm going to be doing is making sure that that, get, that that meeting from Zoom gets onto the air, not switching cameras. Yeah, just making Ty sure it's there with audio and video. It's going to be fun. Tyler's it, your job's going to be a lot easier tonight, Tyler. Normally he's got to set up all of our gear and all the switchers and everything, and, and I don't think you should get paid for tonight, really. I, I probably <laughs> you know what? As long as I go over forty hours, I'm not making overtime. It's good times anyway. Lakes FM and Civic Center TV, we are now delighted to be joined by the uh, the chairperson of the Greater West Bloomfield Cable Communications Commission, Harvey Gerson. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, Dave. I'm fine, thank you. And congratulations on a great show with uh, with the mega cast this morning. Well, thank you very much for joining us for a couple of minutes. Uh, first of all, I will not uh, share with our audience your age, but uh, needless to say, you're over 65, correct? Actually, I'm over 80 and um, trying to stay ahead of the of the problems out here by by conforming to what is recommended for people of our age. 
so uh, how's that going? Before we get into our details, what are you doing? Uh, how are you getting along, and how's it all going? <clears throat> Good questions. Yes, we are. Uh, my wife and I, uh, we've been here for now. Uh, we've been living in this home for 44 years, and this is the first time we've kind of uh, self uh, contained ourselves in the house and uh, restricting our movement outside and contact with people. It's very different. Uh, in my uh, years of being around, I've never experienced anything like this, and I hope it doesn't last too long. But uh, we're doing what we can to stay away from people and, as you, as you mentioned, uh, uh, perform social distancing. What are you doing to, uh, to stay connected with people right now? Well, fortunately, uh, I have uh, children and grandchildren who have uh, volunteered to help us uh, do some shopping if we need it, uh, and they've been great about that. Uh, but we, uh, we are avoiding going into stores. Uh, we, we thought there might be an opportunity for seniors to be able to go into certain stores in the morning without a lot of crowds, but I'm not even sure that's going to work. Uh, I, I still concerned that it might be a lot of crowds but uh we are um you know basically uh entertaining ourselves uh tv and a computer and and uh, watching uh uh civic center tv excellent oh, thank I, you. They're, they're very good and the mega oh, cast you can make that a highlight of your day and tell all your friends the mega cast 10 to noon and then we'll repeat it throughout the day uh and we promise one thing in the mega cast and tyler's going to do it right now wipe down some surfaces oh, here we do okay, we, got, we promise that you will wipe. not get any do. disease of oh, any kind no. through our mega cast oh, absolutely at all. Not. <laughs> very good to know <laughs> so harvey i'm going to put our uh, our cable commission website on tv right now people can see that this is good place to go if you want to find out more about the cable commission and it's uh, i'm just going to roll down here and there you are everybody oh, can see harvey gerson's picture it's there uh i can't really zoom in on this very well but uh but there you are harvey so yes it's uh it's my 10th year as chairperson and I'm, which i'm very proud of uh and uh, 12 years as a member of this commission and i think we've done a lot of great stuff i'm really proud of uh the people that have been on as commissioners and and also uh, people like yourself and uh, Dave Albury, who is our executive uh, director, who has done a fantastic job. I still love to call him Mr. Albury too, because he was my teacher at West Bloomfield High nice. School. <laughs> I know that. Yes. <laughs> so let's talk about the business at hand. Uh, we are in the business here in our four communities: West Bloomfield, Orchard Lake, Kego Harbor, and Sylvan Lake, covering municipal meetings. Uh, we are also in Sunshine Week. This is the week that. All of our communities recognize and the nation recognizes the importance of government happening in the open. And, and Harvey, I can't think of a more critical time to get this right. We certainly are restricting freedom in our country right now. But, but you know, and I know there's some paranoia and some crazy people that are saying, hey, we, you know, the government is trying to take over our lives right now. Um, I respect those opinions. I don't agree with them. But but it's a really critical time to get this right. And I was so happy yesterday to see the governor make it easier for municipalities around the state and boards and elected officials and commissions like your commission, Greater West Bloomfield Cable Communications Commission, to be able to, during these times, meet get together and do it electronically so the business of government can continue to go on and it can go on in front of the people that you represent. Your thoughts? Uh, you're absolutely right. In fact, uh, between now and April 16th, uh, actually between April 2nd and 16th, our commission uh, has scheduled five different meetings. Uh, some of them are committee meetings, which can be postponed if there's nothing critical to uh, uh, to deal with. But the important one, of course, is on April 16th, which is our scheduled commission meeting. Uh, right now, we have 10 members uh, looking to hope, uh, looking to fill the two other uh, community membership. But um, uh, the issue is, uh, what do we do? And we've been looking at different options and one of them as you mentioned was zoom that's a possibility uh, so that people can in some way uh, communicate with us so we can maintain the spirit of uh, uh, of the open meetings act and sunshine week 
Well, it's going to be a great option. By the way, stay tuned today for you and for anyone uh, listening right now. We are going to demonstrate how Zoom works, and we're going to talk to uh, two of our Zoom experts here uh, from Civic Center TV and Motown Digital, and they are going to actually show us, and we're going to do some Zoom right here live. And, you know, today West Bloomfield Township is holding their meeting, a public meeting. It was planned before this latest ruling from the governor, and tonight Kegel Harbor, uh, who is the first meeting that we've had here in our municipalities uh, that will hold a Zoom meeting tonight. I expect it's going to go very well. People will be able to interact like anything technical. Maybe we'll have a bug or two here, but we'll get through it. But I I just want to salute the governor. I think it was a a great decision uh, to use the technology that we have, be able to keep our, uh, our distance from each other, going to our vocabulary list, our social distancing, and uh, get the business of uh, the people done in front of the people. So two different uh, tactics today. West Bloomfield opening the doors. Uh, that decision made before this option was available. Kegel Harbor doing it with Zoom. And uh, Harvey, I think we're going to see a lot more of the latter as the days and weeks go on. That makes a lot of sense because uh, you you definitely want to hold your meetings. You've got business to conduct, and we've got to share it with share what's going on with the public uh, that we serve. And uh, if if the Zoom option works well, I think that's a marvelous way. And cer- certainly, uh, if it does, we may employ it in our meeting on the 16th. You know, we have uh, with ten members, and the da- the dais in in uh, West Bloomfield, where we hold our meetings, the boardroom is designed for seven people, so that a six foot separation between each one of us is very, very difficult. In fact, impossible. So, you know, uh, this may be the answer. Well, we'll see how it goes. And you know, the other thing that's I think uh, helpful through this whole exercise is that businesses have the same challenge. You know, they, they're conducting meetings. They have activities going on. Uh, they have the same challenge. So if we can set a good example, show people how this all works, let them know it's not all that complicated. Uh, today on our show and tonight as we uh, we get participate in Kegel Harbor's meeting, uh, other businesses hopefully will see that. And I know a lot of other businesses are ahead of us on this. Um, they're already Zooming and collaborating, and people are working at home. Um, and already doing all this. But this is the thing that's going on, so we just want to be right in the middle of it, be helpful as we, as helpful as we can, and, uh, and, and as it gets back to these meetings, which we were talking about at the beginning here, uh, just make sure that we're doing all we can to help the government here in our four communities uh, you know, do business in front of the people, and I think this technology is going to work out well for tonight. I'm looking forward to watching it, and uh, we definitely will evaluate this as a possibility to uh, to conduct our meetings. And uh, I don't think it'll just be restricted to April. I think this could go on for uh, several months. All right, real quickly, just for people watching before I say so long, here's the home page of the Greater West Bloomfield Cable Communications Commission website. You've got information on all the uh, commissioners, the history, and the other thing that you do is uh, you, and in particular Dave Alberry and the other members of the commission, uh, provide uh, telephone numbers and information if people are having trouble with their cable television service. And you guys are great advocates. If you run into a brick wall uh, with your uh, cable television, the Greater West Bloomfield Cable Commission can help out, right? Yes, and I give uh, my hats off to uh, Mr. Albury, too, who has done a great job in communicating with uh, the Comcast and uh, other providers when people have questions or problems that they can't solve by themselves. So uh, I, I'm glad we have that service, and it's available to anybody who needs some help. All right, Harvey, thank you very much for being a part of our uh, broadcast today. To, uh, to your best, I hope, I hope uh, you, know, you remain uh, healthy and in good health and, um, and find things to do while you're <laughs> isolated at home. Uh, we will keep in touch with you, and thank you for your incredible support of all the activities going on right here. Well, thank you, uh, Dave and Tyler. You're doing a great job, and uh, I, I was delighted to participate. And if you need anything else, uh, I'm available. Thank All right, you, very good. Thank you very much. He is Harvey Gerson, great guy, legendary 
uh, name in the broadcast industry, West Bloomfield resident. We are so lucky to have him here in West Bloomfield. So we got a lot going on right here. By the way, this is our Civic Center TV website. I'll take you through here uh, quickly in a minute, show you some of the assets available for you. Um, but um, I want to let you know in the next couple of minutes, we're going to check in with D. Sloan in Sylvan Lake. Pastor Tim Hoserlin will check in. We've got to check in with Ryan Younglove, uh, Tyler, and see how our lunch plans are coming. We're going to get yep, carry he's out. On, he's hard at work on that. Getting is that he? All, arranged, yeah. all right. We're going to get carry out live on the radio. He's going to take our remote broadcast gear with him, and we'll see how this whole carry out thing is working. All right. Uh, real quick, I just want to go over to the Civic Center TV website. Uh, you will find links right here on the home page to. Um, our State of the Communities broadcast to the Splash, our weekly television news magazine featuring Brooke Allen, and you'll find all of our coronavirus information. If you go to civiccentertv.com slash coronavirus, you will find information. I can't type and, and talk in the mic. Talk for a second, would you? Yeah, I can talk. I'll tell all about it. Civiccentertv.com slash coronavirus, and it's going to have information, our, our latest television information from, of course, Dave and your interview with Chief Greg Flynn from the fire department, Jennifer Tucker from West Bloomfield Parks, and even beyond that, below the video, we have, in, we have important and helpful links specifically for national and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, statewide, the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, countywide from Oakland County, and specific to the four communities. We have statements on there from Kego Harbor Mayor Rob Kalman from the city of Sylvan Lake. We have their Sylvan Lake news bite re regarding their upcoming and future meetings during this crisis and a link to West Bloomfield Township's website for any updates that they will post, which will be at wbtownship.org. All right, and that's just one of the many sites you can go Precisely. to, civiccentertv.com slash coronavirus. Township has information, police department has information, fire department has information, and of course all the national sites. We hope you uh, take an opportunity and, uh, and engage in those all right we're gonna take a break we'll uh, see how our lunch plans are coming we'll talk to d sloan in just a couple of minutes and pastor tim hoserlin uh, from shepherd king lutheran church and of course he is a fire department chaplain he'll check in with us in the next little bit you are listening to and watching the megacast right here on 89.3 lakes fm lakesfm.com civic center tv and civic center tv.com and we want to thank debbie binder and our friends in the clerk's office in west bloomfield who have been so kind to let us stream today's megacast on their facebook page back in a moment with tyler and more right here on 89.3 lakes fm and lakesfm.com when is the best time to talk to your family about staying in touch during a disaster when floodwaters reach your door when wildfires are engulfing the edge of your neighborhood or an earthquake is destroying buildings. Or is the best time, perhaps, today? During a disaster, you may not be able to stay in touch with your family or friends as easily as you think. Go to ready.gov slash communicate and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait. Communicate. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Dave, what are you doing? Just sending a gift to Dave2037. Who? Me in the future. I save a little money from every paycheck as a gift to Dave2037. So you can spend it on things like anti-gravity boots or a hologram Doberman. Something cool like that. I think Dave2037 deserves it. He worked hard. What are you getting Steve2037? I guess I was thinking Steve2037 would just fend for himself. Well, all right. But don't expect to be borrowing my anti-gravity boots. You want to have money in your future? You got to start saving now. Putting some money from every paycheck into a savings account or contributing to your 401k can make a big difference later. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free ideas and easy ways to save, go to feedthepig.org. That's feedthepig.org. Hey, let's just hope Steve2037 doesn't get his hands on a cold time machine because he is going to come back here and knock some sense into you. This message brought to you by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants and the Ad Council. Health concerns in high school sports go beyond physical injuries. The mental well-being of our young people is a hotter topic than ever before. The Michigan High School Athletic Association website has resources to help adults and students recognize potential problems and deal with them in a positive way. You can learn more about these mental health resources on the health and safety page of the MHSAA website. A message from the MHSAA promoting the value and values of educational athletics. 
All right, welcome back. It's the Megacast on 89.3 Lakes FM, lakesfm.com, Civic Center TV, civiccentertv.com, and also on the West Bloomfield Township Clerk's uh, Facebook page. Thank you to Debbie Binder for making that happen tomorrow. Uh, we'll do the same thing. We'll be on somebody else's Facebook page. And, and we worked that out for sure tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow it looks like we're going to be on the West Bloomfield School District's Facebook, Facebook page, page, much like right. we were last week for the State of the Communities. So All right. We're very is, excited about that. Uh, is Dr. Hill going to join us? Uh, Dr. Hill is planning on joining us, and I will make sure to call back there and confirm that one last <laughs> okay. time. But. All, all indications are that he is ready to go for tomorrow, Dave. All right. Well, do not forget uh, that uh, this is a place to be every day for oh, yeah. local information uh, surrounding the coronavirus. We All the restaurants we called weren't open yet. Maybe it's a little early for them. We're, we, we're calling the stage deli right now. And if we end up having to have deli food from stage for lunch today, oh, that is just going to be terrible. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> oh. I, don't, I don't know what I'll do, Dave. You know? so, our Ryan Young love is trying to go through exactly what you would go through. You can't go to the restaurant. You want to get food. Uh, we're going to do it live on the radio right here for you. And we're, over the next weeks, we are going to do what we can to support the local restaurants and local businesses uh, and help you stay connected with them and do everything we can to to lend them a helping hand by letting you know what they are doing. And uh, we will do that soon. Uh, joining us on the line now is Dee Sloan. Dee is a uh, resident of Sylvan Lake. And Tyler, you know all about what Dee's going to talk to us about today. Yeah, Dee uh, Dee's come up with a really interesting idea to keep Sylvan Lake residents, the prettiest little city in the state of Michigan, and uh, communicating with each other while still practicing social distancing in a safe way. They call it the Sylvan Stop. And D, can you just explain to those who haven't participated or haven't heard about this what the Sylvan Lake Stop is? Hi, yes, I can. Um, so I got the idea from a neighbor who uh, saw a post like a similar post like this um, on social media from Plymouth. They called it the Plymouth Pause. And it's a way where you can come out every evening. We chose 7 p.m., go into your front yard, go on your front porch, and you can just check in with your neighbors. Um, you keep your six feet or more uh, space between yourselves, um, but it's a great way to connect and do a daily check-in. So um, I created it for our neighborhood, and every day since, uh, we have come out and connected with the neighbors around us and shared stories from our day and just um, were able to find a little sense of community in a time that we're so isolated. So when did this begin in Sylvan Lake? Was it just this week or has it been going yeah, on since Yeah, yeah, just a couple of days ago. Just a couple of days ago. We even went out last night in the rain, and we're hoping wow. that tonight um, it's the weather's looking nicer, so hoping that more and more neighbors every night do this. And uh, on our local neighborhood Facebook page, there's been a lot of activity on this post, and people who have gone out and had – no neighbors join them and other ones who have had neighbors join them. But um, a lot of people probably still don't know about it. So it's I said, let's text our neighbors and the, the numbers that we do have and let them know about this. Uh, just a good way to check in every day. And during a time like this, um, you think you realize more and more how important social connections are. And it's a way for us to stay connected in the time when we're only really connected through a digital presence. Yeah, Sylvan Lake's a very close knit community. What what has the turnout been for this so far? Have you have you seen a positive impact for this uh, on the neighbors? And how how is this being received from your neighbors in Sylvan Lake so far? Every response has been really positive. People seem to love it. Um, there is a neighbor, um, Helen, that lives down um, near the lake, and she mentioned that the first night her and her husband went out there and they sang a song. I, can't remember maybe america the beautiful or something along those lines and she said that they had some people walking by and you know had nods and were um not really probably sure what they were doing but the next night they had some neighbors join them and um the night after that you know even more neighbors have joined them so just a fun way to um find some positive in a you know really scary time yeah, it, and I think this is a great way to continue the the neighborly interaction, or even even beyond that, to inspire that neighborly interaction when we do weather this storm, so to speak, and, and get through these times. Do you hope, or do you have any ideas for ways that this can maybe continue on after the pandemic goes on in in some way or some form? 
Well, I think that this pandemic, if shown anybody anything as of yet, it's that, you know, we could all use a little bit of a, of a pause in our life. So maybe instead of just the normal hustle bustle when life um, gets back to normal again or whatever that new normal looks like, um, it's going to be a way that neighbors can find that deeper appreciation for what a sense of community does and how supportive that can make you feel in a time like this that we're going through where it is unknown and scary um, and maybe at times when everything is going right that you can still have those wonderful connections and um, support each other in the good times as well. Yeah, I think that's really important to be able to have those communications and then even beyond that, our four communities do have a, a significant older and an elderly population that are those that are most susceptible to or in the group yeah. that is most susceptible to this and keeping them in communication and keeping their spirits up is also really important. Hey Tyler, can I chime in for just a minute? Oh, ahead, I, I don't dude. want to interrupt, but I, oh, I just I have a, a COVID-19 vocabulary alert. I want to add one oh, more word oh. out of your conversation today. New normal. Oh. It's not a word. It's a phrase, obviously, but I don't remember saying new normal until this whole thing came up. Do you? Not as often, but definitely in the last several days. It's Dee, have you been have you been saying new normal until now? I think I maybe have. I've had a lot of new normals in my life. Um, <laughs> change change of career, change in you know becoming a mother in the past year. So I do definitely know can think of phases where I've had new normals and how I've had to adapt to those. This is something completely um, different from any of those um, new normals. But I, I think it's a phrase that I've been familiar with, but. I definitely think it's definitely more relevant right now. All right. Anything else you want to add, Dee? We re- first of all, we really appreciate you, yeah, you joining you. us today. Is there anything else you, you want to add? Check on your neighbors, those especially the elderly. Like Tyler said, check on your neighbors, even digitally. I'm, you know, a way to check on five people a day. Make a point to, especially those that might not have as many people checking on them. Um, I think that this is a time when we all need to rally together and support everyone around us and we can't do everything we can't support every human that we know but if we maybe just are conscious of picking five people per day to check on and just see how they're doing all right they, d d thank you very much thank, thank you, you thank you, guys for having thank me you on. so Absolutely. much i really appreciate it when we when we started this whole process uh we wanted to hear from the people in our communities a lot of uh, very good information and and advice is coming from uh certainly the president our 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 governor our local elected officials but i think we're getting an awful lot of common sense on this show from folks just like you d and harvey gerson and and others so um thank you so much for your your wonderful thoughts today and the great efforts in sylvan lake Thank you, guys. So once again, hey, that that is the Sylvan Stop every night, 7 o'clock. Go outside, you're just your front door, wave to your neighbors, keep a safe distance, have a, have, have a conversation with them, and check in. You know, I like that, the Sylvan Stop. Maybe we could just do that nationally and I have a, a time event. on a national level where we open our door and just wave to our neighbors and we do that not only here in and maybe the way to start that is to get people in west bloomfield and kegel harbor and orchard lake and maybe our other neighboring communities yeah, to do the same yeah, thing and that's similar to how it started in sylvan lake uh, it was inspired by uh, the plymouth paws of a, a similar idea uh, in one of our other neighboring municipalities and i think it's something that it's it's a positive thing that we can do for our, each other and for our neighbors during this crisis and you know even beyond that all right thank you very much tyler dave scott tyler keith here in the lakes fm radio studio and uh, we thank you very much for joining us we are doing these uh, simulcasts we call them the mega cast we're going to continue to do these mega casts live every day uh, monday through friday on the weekends if necessary uh, from 10 until noon and then we will continue to replay these throughout the day uh, today of course uh, 
is if you're hearing this at night, it's already happened, but we have a West Bloomfield Township board meeting happening at 2 o'clock. We'll have live for you, and the public is uh, invited to come in person. We also have a Kegel Harbor uh, City Council meeting tonight that will be a Zoom meeting. So in the next hour, we're going to get our Zoom experts on the line here. We're actually going to get Zoom connected. We're going to connect to Zoom and do a Zoom broadcast, if you will, here. Pastor Tim Hoserland of uh, Shepherd King Lutheran Church will join us and tell us what's going on uh, with him and his parishioners. And also, he is the chaplain at the fire department. We're going to try to, if we have time, we'll check in with Mayor Aaron Lorenz at Sylvan Lake. And then we are working on ordering lunch. And I understand from the crew that uh, we are going to connect right after the top of the hour with the folks at the Stage Deli on Orchard Lake Road in West Bloomfield. And we're going to send Ryan over live on the radio to get our lunch and do some carryout, which yeah, that's, is that's a, a sign a of the times, well. right? Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of places that are limiting their hours, so it is kind of making a little bit of a challenge, but uh, because people are limiting their hours, limiting their exposure to the outside world as much as possible, while still continuing the great service from these many restaurants in the community. And just to, just to touch on uh, the meetings tonight, if you're listening to this later on in the day, we're talking about a 2 o'clock meeting, or you're listening to this tonight after the Kiko Harbor meeting, and, uh, and that's a 7 o'clock meeting, all these meetings replay on Civic Center TV the, the following day. And, and they're always available uh, on our website. They you are. can watch an archive. You can watch a meeting from today, yesterday, a month ago, years ago. It's all there. All right. So we're going to take a break here at the top of the hour. We'll be back with Pastor Tim Hoserland and our uh, Zoom crew. I guess we can call them that, the Zoom crew. Yeah, and we're going to check crew. in with the Stage Deli and order some lunch yeah. as well. All right. Well, we'll keep, keep cracking at it, Dave. All right. Thank you very much for tuning in. This is the Megacast. Of course, we are on 89.3 WBLD, Orchard Lake, West Bloomfield, Kegel Harbor, Sylvan Lake, Civic Center TV, Channel 15 on Comcast, Channel 99 on AT&T. Tyler's doing a good job wiping uh, down wiping everything down over here keeping it clean in the studio oh yeah and uh and of course we want to thank debbie binder and the west bloomfield township clerk's office for uh, allowing us to stream all this on facebook tomorrow our broadcast uh partner our streaming partner will be the west bloomfield school district and we'll be on their facebook live page tomorrow we're gonna take a break we'll be back in just a couple of moments right here on the megacast civic center tv has gone high definition now you can view all of your favorite shows, including our weekly news magazine show, The Splash, in even crisper picture than ever before. To watch all of your favorite shows live in HD, visit civiccentertv.com slash watch dash live. And for more community programming on the road, stay tuned right here on 89.3 WBLD, the all new Lakes FM. Walking into the pet store, you see... Walking into the pet store, you see big cages filled with the cutest puppies. You walk past the puppies, wishing you could bring one home, but you don't consider where they have to call home. Pet store animals almost always come from animal mills, facilities where animals live in overcrowded cages and more end up dead than sold. This industry is cruel, yet so little is said about it. You can stop it by adopting instead of buying pets and encouraging others to do so. Choose adoption. Choose giving puppies the home they deserve. This message is brought to you by the 89.3 Lakes FM and the WBHS Digital Media Arts Program. Hi, this is Josh Groban. My favorite thing about music is its ability to inspire and nourish the soul. That's why I'm proud to work with Feeding America, an organization that inspires hope for families in need and helps nourish the 16 million kids in this country struggling with hunger. The Feeding America nationwide network of food banks gathers surplus food and helps get it to kids in need, but they can't do it alone. Find out how you can help at feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. When is the best time to talk to your family about staying in touch during a disaster? When floodwaters reach your door? When wildfires are engulfing the edge of your neighborhood? Or an earthquake is destroying buildings? Or is the best time, perhaps, today? During a disaster, you may not be able to stay in touch with your family or friends as easily as you think. Go to ready.gov slash communicate and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait. Communicate. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Dave, what are you doing? Just sending a gift to Dave2037. Who? Me in the future. I save a little money from every paycheck as a gift to Dave2037, so he can spend it on things like anti-gravity boots or a hologram Doberman, something cool like that. I think Dave2037 deserves it. He worked hard. What are you getting Steve2037? 
I guess I was thinking Steve2037 would just fend for himself. Well, all right, but don't expect to be borrowing my anti-gravity boots. You want to have money in your future? You got to start saving now. Putting some money from every paycheck into a savings account or contributing to your 401k can make a big difference later. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free ideas and easy ways to save, go to feedthepig.org. That's feedthepig.org. Hey, let's just hope Steve2037 doesn't get his hands on a cold time machine because he is going to come back here and knock some sense into you. This message brought to you by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants and the Ad Council. Welcome back to the Megacast here on 89.3 Lakes FM, lakesfm.com. We're live on Civic Center TV, Channel 15, Comcast, Channel 99, AT&T, streaming at Civic, civiccentertv.com. That's a mouthful, Tyler. Right. Oh, it's a lot yeah. of places. And uh, then we want to thank the West Bloomfield Township Clerk, Debbie Binder, for allowing us to stream today on the uh, West Bloomfield Township Clerk page. I'm Dave Scott. He's Tyler Keefe. We are uh, very close close to our six feet apart from each other. Yeah, Tyler, no, stay over there. Do not yes. encroach. I won't. Oh, no. no. <laughs> Joining us on the line right now is uh, Steve from Stage Deli. Hi, Steve. How you doing? Good morning. Fantastic. How are you? Well, we're, you know, we're hanging in there. We are. We have your website up on uh, on our live stream and on our video right now, and on the people on the radio can't see it, but uh, they are seeing it on TV. Thank you very much for taking a minute. How's it going over there at Stage Deli through all this? Well, we're doing uh, as well as could be expected and uh, just doing our best to take care of our staff and our guests. And uh, how has the carryout thing been working? Is it working out well? Yeah, so, you know, we've always, you know, for 58 years, we've had a pretty strong carryout component to our business. So uh, we're just making sure we take extra good care of everyone in that carryout, and it's going going well. And your employees, are they doing all right? Employees are doing all right. Uh, we're doing our best. We're collecting money for them and uh, for some who aren't working and right. uh, been able to keep employed probably three quarters of our staff. So, so I'm pretty grateful at the moment. Who so knows? It's day by day. Steve, how's it work if somebody, well, we're going to find out actually because Ryan uh, is going to come get our order we're going to place here in a minute. Oh, great. But, uh, but how's it work? And, and uh, you know, what if you had to, you had to put some special process in place or tell us how it works? Right. So um, we've always had, you know, call ahead, carry out. What we've added uh, in this situation is uh, curbside pickup. So you can call and come and uh, just pick up your order in your car. You don't have to leave. You know, you don't even have to hand over your credit card. Everything is touchless. Uh, we're trying to make it as, uh, as easy and as possible and maintaining separation. Uh, we're also offering delivery. So we'll deliver to your home. Uh, and if you like, we could just leave it at your doorstep so we don't even have oh. to uh, come in contact. All right, very good. I, I want to check. I think I have Ryan Younglove, uh, our, uh, one of our, uh, our uh, videographers here. Ryan, can you hear me? Yes, sir, I can hear you. All right, so Ryan's got the remote broadcast gear. And Steve, if it's okay, we're going to send Ryan over. I think we want to do curbside. Is that is that okay, or do you want him to come in? What curbside's would be best? perfect. Whatever's good for you. All right, we're going to send Can Can we talk to you when we get over there, and can Ryan kind of do this live on the radio? Well, of course. I could either be on the phone, or I could come out and deliver your food. Yeah, well, Ryan's got the remote broadcast gear, so we'll be able to do that and do it all live. I want to just capture the whole essence of how this works, so people... They're comfortable doing it themselves, all right? Right. Our guests have been very happy with the process so far. All right, of, of course. So here is our order. John wants a Silverado no cheese. Excellent. Ryan wants a Silverado regular. Yes. Jake wants a spicy, crispy chicken sandwich. Excellent choice. And uh, I would just like a good old traditional pastrami sandwich with an old dill. No, uh, nothing else, just pastrami and and your wonderful bread and that'll be it would you like some of our perfect yellow mustard on it yeah absolutely that'd be Ooh. that'd be great Ooh, that's the way to go. tyler keith my uh my co-host over here what what do you want tyler all right steve i'm gonna go with the blackened chicken sandwich blackened chicken you got it Fantastic. all right Looking so uh like 11 30 ish is that okay Perfect. We'll spend uh, about fantastic. 20 minutes. All right, we'll send Ryan over there. Any other thoughts for our listeners or any uh, any other thoughts you want to share before Ryan gets over there? You know what? This too shall pass. Don't panic. We'll all be good. All right. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Thank all right, you. there he is, Steve from Stage Deli in Orchard Lake Road. In all of my many years of broadcasting, I've never done carryout live on the radio. No, neither have I. It's <laughs> one for the ages, Dave. 
All right, Stage Deli. New normal. <laughs> We're going to do everything we can to support the businesses that are really struggling here in West Bloomfield right now. So uh, hey, if you have a favorite restaurant you want us to order from tomorrow, we'll uh, we'll be glad to do that. And uh, we look forward to seeing how all this is going. Ryan, uh, 1130, is that going to work for you? That should work perfect. I'll be on my way and be there by 1130. All right, you keep us up to date. Let us know if you run into any trouble along the way, okay? All righty. All right, very good. That is Ryan Younglove from our staff here at Civic Center TV. Let's take a quick break. We'll be right back in just a minute. We'll check in with Pastor Tim Hoserlind when we return on the Megacast right here on Civic Center TV, Lakes FM 89.3 WBLD Orchard Lake. I think I already did that, didn't I? No, well, now we're, not for this hour. You have no, okay. Good. Now we're good. totally yeah, legal. Going, yeah, All right. Know. The Megacast continues in just a moment. When is the best time to talk to your family about staying in touch during a disaster? When floodwaters reach your door? When wildfires are engulfing the edge of your neighborhood? Or an earthquake is destroying buildings? Or is the best time, perhaps, today? During a disaster, you may not be able to stay in touch with your family or friends as easily as you think. Go to ready.gov communicate and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait. Communicate. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Dave, what are you doing? Just sending a gift to Dave2037. Who? Me in the future. I save a little money from every paycheck as a gift to Dave2037, so he can spend it on things like anti-gravity boots or a hologram Doberman. Something cool like that. I think Dave2037 deserves it. He worked hard. What are you getting Steve2037? I guess I was thinking Steve2037 would just fend for himself. Well, all right. But don't expect to be borrowing my anti-gravity boots. You want to have money in your future? You got to start saving now. Putting some money from every paycheck into a savings account or contributing to your 401k can make a big difference later. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free ideas and easy ways to save, go to feedthepig.org. That's feedthepig.org. Hey, let's just hope Steve2037 doesn't get his hands on a cold time machine because he is going to come back here and knock some sense into you. This message brought to you by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants and the Ad Council. And welcome back to the Megacast. I am Dave Scott. He is Tyler Keith, and uh, we thank you for joining us here. The Megacast, this is live on the radio, 89.3 Lakes FM, live on the Internet, audio, lakesfm.com, live on Civic Center TV, Channel 15, and Channel 99, 15 Comcast, 99 at We invite you to go to our Civic Center TV website and watch there in full high definition. Tyler keeps saying yes, it looks it better on, on, on the Internet internet than it does on tv yeah it does. We, we broadcast well we're broadcasting standard definition on television or we're, we're crisp high definition online all right and whatever uh, your preference is and a huge thanks to debbie binder our west bloomfield township clerk as she has uh, opened up her facebook page to us and we are there as well today we thank you for tuning in wherever you happen to be uh we are here to get you through this entire situation our, our ryan young love is going out to do curbside pick up at the stage deli we'll check in with him in a couple of minutes and our zoom experts and i think that's going to be ken cooper and john atwater are uh, stationed in uh, troy and uh, and here in west bloomfield and we're going to do a zoom broadcast because tonight from kegel harbor the whole meeting tyler is going to happen uh on zoom west bloomfield township board happens and, and maybe this is the last meeting they do in the uh, conventional old school way today at two o'clock at kigo uh didn't really put this together until after the governor's ruling yesterday at four o'clock that allows a uh, a digital meeting if you will so they are our first swing at it tonight yeah from an inside look that, that they were really leaning toward doing this virtual meeting they were innovating long before the mandate uh, from the state that uh, the Open Meeting, Meetings Act would be put, would be delay, would be um, done away with during this crisis, um, and it's really it was great news for all involved that they can now do this meeting over Zoom. And so yes, this township board meeting at two o'clock, which will be live on Civic Center TV and here on Lakes FM as well as on our live stream online, um, that may be the last meeting you see regularly for a while at the place that these are normally held. Well, he is a very good friend to Tyler and my, myself and, yes, and a really good friend to our entire community. Joining us on the line now is Pastor Tim Hoserland of Shepherd King Lutheran Church. And I'd like to remind you, he is also our fire department chaplain. Pastor Tim, good to have you with us. Thank you very much. 
Well, thank you for joining us. It is uh, certainly we are, we are in the midst of times that I don't think any of us saw coming at us even uh, a week or two ago. What are your thoughts today? Well, I wholeheartedly agree. Um, uh, we had a conference call uh, with some clergy uh, last Friday on the 13th uh, with uh, the fire department and the police department. They were really encouraging us to suspend worship, uh, which I've never done before. So um, that was a really a strange experience for us last Sunday, uh, not having any worship whatsoever. So we're uh, working together as a congregation to, to uh, really kind of retool for kind of digital things um, in terms of worship and support and getting the word out and kind of continuing uh, what we can do. So I'm sure everybody's in that same boat. Um, and so it's just right now this uh, massive transition that we're all making. I imagine it was a little surreal on Sunday, not not being with your parishioners. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, it was odd because I kind of didn't know what to do with myself. <laughs> it's just become a regular part of uh, my routine. I've been uh, this this year will be celebrating my 29th year in ministry. Um, and for Christians, this is kind of like a special time. It's uh, called Lent. You know, and and within three weeks, we're going to hit, like, the most important week of, uh, you know, our our whole uh, life of Christianity, and that's called Holy Week and Good Friday and Easter. And we don't know if we're going to be doing that digitally, um, you know, over Facebook or our website, or if we're actually going to meet together. So, yeah, it's it's something I have never, ever experienced in almost three decades of of, of being a pastor. Pastor Tim Hoserlind is with us of Shepherd King Lutheran Church. He's also the fire department chaplain. I'm Dave Scott. He's Tyler Keefe. This is the uh, this is the megacast here on 89.3 Lakes FM, lakesfm.com, and Civic Center TV. So uh, we have, didn't have a chance to talk before we got on the air. Do you have a plan together for Sunday? Yes, we are. Um, we are going to uh, record it, um, and we're going to uh, play it uh, through our church website and over Facebook. I think there's a you know just a bunch of other religious communities um, that'll probably be doing the same thing. Um, but that's what we're planning to do. Uh, I've been doing a lot of calling, actually, before last you know Friday the thirteenth when schools and colleges started to. Um, close. Um, I checked in with the uh, majority of our college students that are part of our church and also uh, the school teachers that we have who are members of our congregation, you know, how you do and how you're holding up and in any way that we could help. And then, uh, then I started calling moms um, because I know they were very nervous about what was happening with their children. And, and uh, this past week, I've been calling all our uh, uh, calling all of our uh, people who uh, live alone, uh, people who are kind of like considered our shut-ins, uh, people in nursing homes that I can't get to. Um, you know, we have a uh, parishioner who's in the hospital right now. There's no way that I'll be able to see that particular person other than, you know, again, calling them on the phone. Uh, we had a couple who was planning to get married at the end of the month. And they've uh, postponed uh, that ceremony and uh, probably sometime until later in the in the summer. So, so all this time is really spent kind of like rescheduling, uh, canceling, uh, just calling and and just checking in with as many people as I know as possible. And and what you're doing is really no different than what anyone else is doing in businesses, Correct. at at you know, at houses of worship in our municipalities. It's what we are we are all going through. So Sunday yeah. you're gonna record your service on Sunday with, with nobody in any of the pews. What are your thoughts? Um, I'm going to have to get used to, um, I'm going to say, looking into a camera. 
<laughs> and again, there's there's really no reaction from anybody in there. That so I think what's going to happen, and hopefully it won't, is I'm probably going to be a little bit stiffer than I normally am on a Sunday morning. Uh, but I think the good news is is that uh, you know I, uh, I still get the reaction uh, delayed as it might be from other members of the congregation and people who saw it. So uh, so I mean that's that's. Well, if, if it makes you feel any better, Pastor Tim, Tyler and I do this every day, and we never get any reaction from anybody either. So we're, you know, we're kind of. <laughs> I'm chuckling because it's like, yeah, wow, I now I know what broadcasters go through on a regular basis. Yeah, right? we're, we're yeah. kind of used to it. So, you know, I think the thing I really get from this, first of all, obviously you care so much and you're putting putting all this extra effort in. But I think the thing that I, I really get out of all this is all the phone calls that you're making. And that's wonderful that you're doing that. But, you know, there again is something that we all can do. We can all pick up the phone. We can all do maybe FaceTime on our iPhone. We can. There's so many ways to connect with people. And don't you think just making that connection, uh, that's really what it's all about right now. If we can't be there in person, just connecting with people. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, that my role as chaplain is really one of the first questions that I ask in the midst of uh, a crisis situation is, um, who are the people who can support you during this period of time? Um, and it's something that they forget. My, my big thing in terms of people going through a crisis is that they forget the support that they have or the support that they can be, uh, and sometimes they forget that they need to take care of themselves. So, you know, again, I, uh, people tend to uh, uh, be hypervigilant or they tend to uh, just, uh, you know, kind of, again, fall into a little depression and go to bed and stay to bed. There's, a, there's things, again, we can do to avoid uh, extremes at this particular time. So support is, a, is an excellent thing to, to remember. You can be a support for someone else and remember the people who do support you. And that's a, that'll go a, a long way of, uh, of taking care of some of those things that we might be, you know, preoccupied with at this particular time. Thank you for tuning into the MegaCast. I'm Dave Scott. He is Tyler Keefe sitting over there in the other six feet away in the other oh, side of the studio. I'm, I'm back over it. back yeah, over here. He is six feet away? I'm, I'm, I'd, say, I'd say we're about six feet away. All right, very good. <laughs> we're keeping our distance here. Yeah. Yeah, we would do that anyway, but uh, we, we are. <laughs> uh, Pastor Tim Hoserlin is on the line from Shepherd King Lutheran Church. Uh, Pastor Tim, you're also uh, clearly, ever, as everyone knows, the fire department chaplain. Uh, how are our first responders doing right now? You know, I'm um, just starting to check in with uh, some of them now, uh, and um, you know, going to be sending out a, a, a message that I hope will probably be uh, relayed to them. But, you know, main thing right f for me right now is, uh, again, supporting the chief and in, in what he's doing. So um, that's that's kind of where we're at right now. I know that there's some people who, who uh, really feel this need to help. Uh, there may be people who want to drop things off at the stations or if there's some Again, all the children are out of school, that some parents might think a field trip to, you know, one of the stations might be a, a neat idea. Obviously, they're really uh, uh, trying to, uh, to be in the midst and to help people in this whole situation. So, you know, some of those things are well-meaning, but maybe they might not be the most helpful for our first responders. Um, and so those are things to just kind of be aware of. Uh, and they're like, you know, they're, uh, I would say, very reasonably uh, concerned because they're going to be on the front lines and coming into contact like hospital workers uh, with people who may be having the virus. You know, you, you mentioned that. What, what kind of uh, feedback are you getting from your parishioners, people that you've called, uh, certainly people in the fire department? Uh, how, is there any way you can summarize where the people are at right now that you've been communicating with? Um, I guess quickly, uh, they're, all of them are dealing with the unknown. 
um, and all of them are dealing with what will be described really as a as a big transition. So, you know, my conversations with them is how can you manage the transition in a way that's going to be helpful or beneficial? Um, how can someone deal with the, with things that are unknown at this point? So just to help people not to be reactionary, um, but kind of reflect on, you know, you have gifts and abilities, um, use them uh, for yourself and for other people. And again, uh, that's kind of my message. But the, here are the things that I'm hearing for people. You know, again, they're making a huge transition and they're, um, they're really dealing with the unknown, which can be extremely scary. All right. Well, Pastor Tim, thank you so much for being with us on the radio today. It brings us all comfort to hear your voice and uh, to hear your words and your thoughts. Thank you for everything you do for our community, uh, in particular for uh, our first responders. And uh, whenever there's something significant going on, I I see at all these events, uh, you are a great friend to... Uh, all of our communities, and uh, and we really appreciate you being with us at uh, these challenging times, and together we will get through all this. Oh, absolutely. we got a really beloved community that uh, continues to reach out to its members, and so uh, I am so thankful to be part of West Bloomfield. All right, Pastor Tim, we will keep in touch with you in the coming days, and I, I suspect we'll be checking in with you again live on the Megacast, all right? All right, great. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Feel free to tell all of your parishioners on Sunday to tune into the Megacast. It's another way to connect. I, oh, yeah. You know, I mean, I guess it would be shameful for me to ask for a little plug during your sermon, but if, you know, it happens to work its way in there, <laughs> and you mention that, I, I, you know, I, it just happens to happen, you know, that's just the way it goes. <laughs> I, I, I can include that on my Sunday announcement. I, pre- <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. Well, we didn't we didn't make the sermon, but we did make the Sunday announcement. That's 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 pretty good. That's a good that's a good spot. That is a really really good. That's a good spot. All right. So, uh, quick update, Tyler. Why don't you just uh, first of all tell everyone if you would just recap what's going on with meetings tonight. So. Today we have two meetings. At first at 2 o'clock, it's an emergency meeting of the West Bloomfield Township Board. They're going through emergency protocols and what and how they're going to weather this storm, particularly as it pertains to uh, township services and township meetings going forward to keep uh, that their operations safe during this time. That's at 2 o'clock, Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM, lakesfm.com as well. It'll be TV and radio live simulcast as usual. Then tonight, 7 o'clock, the Kingo Harbor City Council will hold their meeting over Zoom. That will also be on Civic Center TV, 7 o'clock, civiccentertv.com. And both of these meetings, Dave, will replay tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock p.m., as they norm- as meetings normally do, as well as on the weekend, beginning in chronological order, at 9 a.m. And, of course, all of these meetings online, civiccentertv.com. You'll click on On Demand, and your meetings will be on that page. All right, it's going to be a, a very a fascinating day, really, today to to see a Zoom meeting happen. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, that's a new thing. I didn't really expect we would do it. I mean, eventually normal. technology was going to drive it anyway, but uh, now it is uh, it is by necessity. So we will keep up to date. So how does this Zoom thing really work? What's it look like? How's it all come together? We have our own Ken Cooper and uh, and John Atwater, two of our technicians here, who are on Zoom. We're going to check in with them in a couple of minutes. Our own Ryan Younglove is uh, out in the field with a remote broadcast equipment he is getting us lunch we're going to see what it's like to do drive through uh dining live on the radio he's at stage deli on orchard lake road we'll check in with him in a couple of minutes and a whole lot more so stick around it's the mega cast right here on civic center tv channel 15 channel 99 at&t civic center tv.com and we also invite you to continue to listen here on the radio 89.3 lakes fm and lakesfm.com. we will be right back all right everybody in the car let's go what are we gonna do first when we get there mom go for a hike sure what about canoeing can we go canoeing too i don't see why how long does it take to get to the forest it's not that far sweetie Are we there yet? Yep, we're here. Already? 
It's a short drive from your neighborhood to your naturehood. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a neighborhood park or green space near you. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the U.S. Forest Service. The need for blood is constant, and sometimes that need becomes critical. From accident victims and cancer patients to premature babies and those with blood disorders, hospital patients rely on all of us to make sure that blood is on the shelves and ready to help. That's why the American Red Cross needs you. Make an appointment to give blood today by calling 1-800-RED-CROSS or visit redcrossblood.org. Your one blood donation can save up to three lives. This has been a public service announcement from the American Red Cross and 89.3 WBLD, the all-new Lakes FM. Is that a faucet running? That's not a faucet. That's a river rushing through the forest. Forest rivers provide over 100 million people with clean water to drink. What? I can't hear you because of the vacuum. That's not a vacuum. That's the trees in the forest cleaning up the air we breathe. I didn't know the trees were so amazing. Yep, and the forest gives us shade, trees to climb. That's awesome. Let's go explore some more. Visit the forest today and enjoy all it does just for you. To learn more about the forest and find one near you, go to discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Civic Center TV is your home for everything Greater West Bloomfield. Here you can tune into community programming such as our weekly news magazine show, The Splash, as well as coverage of local events and meetings in Kego Harbor, Sylvan Lake, Orchard Lake, and West Bloomfield. You can also watch all of your local programming online anytime at civiccentertv.com. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. I'm Britney Spears. I've had the pleasure of singing all over this great nation, but today I'm lending my voice to the 15 million kids in America struggling with hunger. Every year, billions of pounds of excess food go to waste, while one in five children may be left without enough food for a meal. But it doesn't have to be this way. That's why the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks helps to get food to families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to learn how you can help. Together we can solve hunger. Together we're Feeding America. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. 89.3 Lakes FM, lakesfm.com. This is the Mega Cast. My name is Dave Scott. He is Tyler Keefe over there on the other side of the studio. We are live here as we will be every day, Monday through Friday, 10 to noon, and then with repeat broadcasts uh, throughout the day on the Mega Cast. What is a Mega Cast? We, there's you know radio broadcasting, there's cable casting, there's a simulcast when you have radio and TV. Tyler, we've taken it to a whole new level. Uh, it is the Mega Cast. And that is radio, streaming audio, podcasting, cable TV, streaming, and uh, video on, on cable or on our website, right? Yeah, and so much everywhere. I can't even keep it straight. No, we're, we're everywhere. Right? And then yeah. Facebook. And every day we're going to have a Facebook partner. Today our Facebook partner we really want to thank is Debbie Binder of the uh, West Bloomfield Township Clerk's Office. She, in fact, is the West Bloomfield Township Clerk, so we are at all those places. Uh, in just a moment, we're going to talk to our own Ken Cooper and uh, John Atwater. There's John Atwater right now. You can see him. Uh, he's smiling away and waving. Yeah. I don't know if we can see Ken here. We'll see him in a minute. But they are connected via Zoom, and uh, we'll talk to them in just a couple of minutes. Right now, though, let's go out to West Bloomfield, and we ordered lunch at the Stage Deli a little while ago. We went onto their website, and uh, they are doing the curbside pickup, as you can see. We want to do all we can to support our uh, local businesses during these trying times, and Ryan Younglove is uh, out there in the field with a remote broadcast gear. Ryan, can you hear me? Yes, I'm here, Dave. Um, I've got our food. It was a very nice interaction, very clean, very social distancy. Uh, I actually have Steve here with me if you would like to ask him any questions. Sure, sure. Steve from uh, Stage Deli. Hi, Steve. Can you hear me? Uh, hold on. I'm Steve, putting headset Steve's, on. Okay, you're going to put... Okay. Make sure you wipe off the uh, the headset. Did you bring some disinfectant wipes? Um, yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. All right. Very good. Hi, Steve. All All right. You know, it's live radio. It's uh, I can just ask minute. him the questions. That would, yeah, I think that would. He doesn't want to put those headphones on. I, Tyler, I wouldn't put the headphones on either. I'm very under six feet. And then the other thing, I heard Donald Trump say in TV, "Don't put a pair of broadcasters headphones on right now." He said that. He said. I think he. I heard him say Dave Scott's name directly. <laughs> that might have been. That might have been Governor Whitmer. I don't know. Somebody I don't know. One did. Of those two. So ask Steve. Uh, just how's it going? Uh, okay. Uh, Steve, uh, Dave just wants to know how it's going and uh, how's the day been? Yeah, so it's going well. Uh, we've had a lot of carryout customers already. We just opened at 11 o'clock and uh, we're 
busy cooking away fresh food for the day. Is there anything that um, that that we should do if we're coming to the uh, Stage Deli or any other restaurant? Any special preparations that uh, that people should be making as they're coming to get their carryout food? Uh, Dave wants to know if there's any special preparations we should be making if we're coming here to uh, get our carryout food. Uh, just uh, work up a good appetite because the food is great <laughs> and abundant. Oh, yeah. All right, Ryan. All right, can you bring the food back then? So you got everything you need right now. Oh, yeah, I'll hurry back. I know everybody's hungry, so I'll hurry back with our food. All right. He is our ace reporter in the field, oh, Ryan yeah. Younglove at, sta- at Stage Deli. Uh, the first, I think that's the first ever live carryout on the radio. It very well might be, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I wouldn't be surprised. All right. Tyler Keefe is uh, joining us here in studio. My name is Dave Scott. This is our mega cast, and a reality of where we are right now uh, is that uh, we cannot all connect the way we, we used to. We cannot get together in groups. Um, so we're trying to find new ways to do it. One of the new ways we are doing it is with Zoom. And joining us right now is our own John Atwater from Civic Center TV and Motown Digital. Hi, John. Hey, guys. How's it going? We're doing great. And I believe Ken Cooper is there. John is in West Bloomfield. Ken, maybe you can chime in as well. Ken is in uh, in Troy. Ken, are you there? I am here. Oh, I am uh, coming coming at you right here from uh, Troy, Michigan at the Motown Studios. All right. Very good. So, Ken, you are the guy to put all the Zoom stuff together. Can you give us just a yeah. little idea of of what's going on and before you do that i just want people to their people are seeing you right now ken uh and we're hearing it and it just looks and sounds great so what is this platform oh, can you tell us a little bit about it and how we're going to be using it in public meetings so uh you know zoom is a at, at its heart is a teleconferencing you know uh, program and it really allows people to connect to one another either in a webinar format where you've got uh you know, you just kind of tune in to something that's going on or what we're doing right now, which is a, uh, a meeting. So everybody that, that, you know, comes to the meeting online gets to participate. They can share their camera, share their microphone and kind of interact with one another um, collectively. All right. John Atwater um, is in our uh, West Bloomfield studios. He's actually right around the corner, but we have him Zooming, too. So, John, did you right. have to do anything special uh, as a participant to get your Zoom all up and working? No, not really. Um, to get the three of us connected like this, it was pretty simple. It was a little more tricky uh, to get your studio, Dave and Tyler, to connect and play nice with um, our laptops and equipment that Ken and I are using. Um, but mainly because we're taking um, broadcast audio from microphones sure. um, in a podcast studio setting and then to get that into the uh, embedded within the video here so that we can all hear and see each other. But for me and Ken, it was pretty simple. Just plug and play. So and, basically, uh, well, for like the Kegel Harbor meeting tonight, uh, Ken Cooper, uh, the, yeah. the members of the of the Kegel City Council will just get their laptops up. They'll probably right. what they get an invitation to join a meeting. They do. Um, when you set up a meeting, what if it's an impromptu or a scheduled meeting, you just literally send out a, uh, an, a link and people click the link. If they've already got the, the uh, Zoom client installed, then it'll just pop up in the meeting and everybody will be ready to go. Um, you can choose whether or not you want to have your camera running or if you just want to have audio only. But it's really interactive if you're, if you're using the camera and the audio, which is what we're doing right now. And as John said, uh, you know, he and I connecting to the meeting took less than 30 seconds. Can you two talk back and forth without me involved? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I'm hearing John and, and seeing him. And, you know, what's happening on my end, as an example, is whoever is talking kind of gets the focus. So it, the software automatically kind of moves back and forth between who's speaking and, you know, who's listening. So when John comes up, when he's speaking, John should be seen uh, in the meeting and vice versa with me. And and that'll happen tonight for the Kegel Harbor meeting. So we will be uh, kind of like sitting in and watching while all this happens. We won't be talking here at Civic Center TV, but uh, we're going to capture all this and put it on TV just like we are doing right now uh, with you. And we'll be able to see what's going on and capture the whole meeting. And then the members of the Kegel Harbor City Council will be able to interact yeah. back and forth between each other. And it'll all happen automatic, just like it's going on right now with you. Right, Ken? 
Yeah, just like it's going on right now. And, you know, they have, you know, some when they when they get comfortable with this, there's a lot of other things that they can do during the meeting, whether that be sharing things on their screen or they can pop up a whiteboard if they want to kind of, you know, use that same kind of feeling that they were sitting in the room together and scrawl some things out on the whiteboard. Um, if someone brings up something in their browser and they want to share what they have in their browser, they can do that as well. So it's more than just the face-to-face -face, uh, interaction. They can use applications that are already on their computer and kind of share the view of those applications as well, which I think is a really great you know, added bonus to, you know, any kind of teleconferencing. So we're talking about municipal meetings here, but uh, Ken, this could be utilized for a family who wants to get together. Uh, Pastor Tim could use this certainly for his services if he would like on Sunday. Our, our, uh, there's all kinds of uses for this if it's uh, as easy as you say it is. Um, where you can just get people together, you set up an account, I assume, and invite whoever you want, and it's just like sitting around the dinner table, uh, you know, on Friday night, having uh, having a Friday night meal with members of your family. Yeah, it really is, and, you know, as an example, I was um, uh, doing a little Zoom meeting with my daughter and my and grandkids, and she pulled the application up on her phone, and I was able to just, I mean, it was really quick. It was really easy. There wasn't a lot of bells and whistles to do it. Um, we just created a real quick, you can create a impromptu meeting where you don't have to schedule it in advance or whatever. Just say, create a meeting. Um, and then they either click a link or punch in the number and it's just you're all connected. So and and this is not a commercial. I'm not trying to turn this into a commercial for Zoom. There are other services, yeah. Skype, Skype for Business, uh, a lot of other uh, services out there. But uh, but this technology has really come a long way in the last couple of years. And uh, John Atwater, it really uh, couldn't have come at a better time uh, that we have it available right now. And people uh, without something like this would be so disconnected. Right, and it's really nice that this works the way it does and that it's real time so as i talk to you right now you're hearing me in real time there's a very minimal delay and uh you know really easy to communicate over large distances short distances bring a lot of people in and not really need a lot of space and john again all you have right there you don't have anything special you have your in fact you're using your own laptop your mac right could be a mac a pc yep. as long as it's got yep. a camera and a microphone do when you turned right. it on now i know the studio setup you did here was complicated because we need to get it on tv and radio but for your typical user who doesn't you know have a mega cast to do uh you just kind of open it up and go to the web page and did it find your camera and find your mic and just it was pretty easy yeah and you you can have the ability to connect a microphone or a headset if you want um but like i'm just using the internal microphone and camera on my computer uh, Ken set this meeting up and he texted me uh, what it looks like a cell phone number, you know, code. And I typed that in and then all of a sudden he popped up and I popped up on his end and we could communicate. And uh, yeah, it was it was super easy. All right. And John, you're all alone. No one within six feet. I see. Right. No, 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 no. All right. Good. There. You, OK, good. You're <laughs> he's in the front office here at uh, Civic Center TV. Uh, Ken. Ken Cooper, yeah. Mo, you're in the Motown Digital Troy offices. It doesn't look like there's anyone there within six feet either. No, um, I, I've got uh, my my business partner, Kieran, is sitting about 10 or 12 feet away from me, uh, working away up here in our offices. But uh, beyond that, um, no, we're, we're taking all the precautions that we, that we can and should in order to make sure that we're not uh, unnecessarily exposed to one another. So. All right. Well, the only thing that's unfortunate, the technology is really amazing, but the one thing it can't do is these uh, deli sandwiches we have coming back that Ryan Younglove is bringing uh, yeah. back from, from stage. Tyler, he, we can't yeah. get one to Ken. We can't. We can't do that. <laughs> Not yet. I know. Maybe a few more no, years. That, that would be some really great technology, that I think. <laughs> that, would be, that, would be. that would Can you work on that, Ken? Yeah, I'm on it. I'm I'm on it right now. All right, I think the I think the boss doesn't mind if you go order your own deli sandwich and have it delivered. I just I, he he told me that would be okay. Good. <laughs> okay. What a boss. All right, Ken Cooper. Anything else to add for people that are going to be engaging with this technology? 
No, uh, not really. I, I would just encourage people to, you know, maybe go to the Zoom website, type it in your browser, go check it out. You know, as you know, sometimes people are like, well, what's this going to cost me? Just to give you a quick uh, overview on that, you know, it is free. Um, you can do a one to one meeting as long as you like. If you've got multiple people in a meeting, uh, the free version is limited to 40 minutes um, on the free version. But if you are a business or, you know, something where you're going to need more people or longer time, the the what they call their pro version is fourteen ninety nine a month. You just pay on a month to month basis. Sure. But for all of us out there who just want to connect with our friends and family, the free version should suit you very well. You can use it on your mobile device. Um, you can use it on a computer. It's it's got lots of different platforms. So real easy to use. I'd encourage people to go check it out and see how it fits for them. All right. Hopefully our Kego Harbor meeting will go well tonight, Ken, and, and, every, and everything will work out really well. Thank you very much, Ken Cooper. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. John Atwater, thank you very much. And uh, we do have a sandwich that'll be arriving here in a minute for you. Thank you, Dave. All right. Thank you, guys. We really appreciate it. There it is, Tyler. Zoom. And uh, hopefully everything will work out really well tonight when we do our Kegel Harbor meeting. Yeah, yeah if it goes as smoothly as our interviews with uh, with John and Ken just went, it'll be it'll be like business as usual almost. You know, this is this is the stuff that really uh, I just want to make sure people know about. It's available. It's easy. We're going to be utilizing it to to make things work here. A lot of our guests over the next couple of weeks, we don't really want. To be going to them we don't really want them coming here we'll be using zoom to have a lot of communications if you have co-workers you need to get together with if uh, you want to use this for other purposes you could go ahead and deploy it in your life and i just wanted people today to see that it really wasn't that hard and just from for the radio listeners i mean it, it sounds good too it does it sounds it sounds great all right oh hey ken are you still there or did you take off I think Ken's out of there. John Atwater, I see you. You're still there with us? Yeah. yeah. I'm still, Ken's, okay. Ken's here. He just oh, unmuted okay. his mic. Hey, real quick, one final thing very briefly. Uh, do you have any words for our vocabulary, any new sayings, either one of you guys, that we are using? We've, we've got flatten the curve, social distancing, uh, fomite transition, happy birthday song, yet the song you sing when you're washing your hands, uh, asymptomatic, pandemic and new normal any any additions either of you guys um wow uh i don't i i think face mask is is probably the the term all right i'll add that one face yeah, mask face there you mask. go ken cooper on the spot okay. comes up with an answer i thought you were going to say zoom well, that'd be, that'd be <laughs> i got one for you, you too Dave. Oh, okay all right john that's atwater awesome. what do you have Curbside testing. There, there, oh, yeah, yeah, that's you know. that's wow. perfect. I like that. Curbside testing. All right, really good, John. Thank you, guys. We're going to take a break. We'll be back in a minute with the final moments of the mega cast for today. I'm Dave Scott. He is Tyler Keefe, and this is our mega cast right here on Civic Center TV, on civiccentertv.com, and of course on the radio streaming on lakesfm.com, and right there on your radio, 89.3 Lakes FM. Back with more in a moment. Hello, it's me, the designer jeans in the back of your closet. What happened to us? I used to summer in the Hamptons, and now I'm stuck behind a pair of sweats. Okay, maybe I never really fit you right, but I got a lot more Sunday fun days left in me. So take me to Goodwill, where I can really make a difference. Your donations to Goodwill create jobs, training programs, and education assistance for people in your community. To find your nearest donation center, go to goodwill.org. Donate stuff. Create jobs. A message from Goodwill and the Ad Council. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly, it's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... ...could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. 
Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. It may be hard to believe, but people just like you are already saving money. FeedThePig.org makes it easy. Their simple savings plan teaches you how to start saving without going overboard. So you don't need to sell all your belongings and live in a commune. These dungarees belong to all of us now, Tom. You don't need to get a second job as a stuntman. We need a new stuntman! You just need FeedThePig.org. Don't get left behind. Get tips and tools at FeedThePig.org. Brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. All right, welcome back, Lakes FM multicast. Oh, mega cast. I got. I said we're multicast. Not, we're not mega multicasting cast. anymore. We're mega casting now. All right, it is the mega cast on Lakes FM, LakesFM.com, Civic Center TV, CivicCenterTV.com. And a huge thank you today to Debbie Binder, the West Bloomfield Township Clerk, and uh, her Facebook page, which she offered up for the broadcast. You can watch us there. Tomorrow, we are going to connect with the West Bloomfield Schools. Whole another angle to what's going on right now. How are the students? Uh, getting by? Are they are they are they getting uh, instruction at home? Are they using Zoom or something similar? What's going on? Uh, we are going to talk to Dr. Hill or somebody else with the school district tomorrow. And uh, Tyler, I think we've worked out where we are going to be on the school's Facebook page tomorrow yep, as well. Plan on being on the West Bloomfield School District's Facebook page, similar to what we did for the state of the communities. And then uh, even on top of our conversation with Dr. Hill tomorrow, we also yesterday here in studio recorded some segments with Dr. Hill and with uh, a couple of the administration members, Deanna Barish and Kyle Anderson, uh, kind of an overview of how the schools transitioned into this, as we put on our vocabulary list, new normal, um, and, and how that process is going and how it's affecting the students and parents in the district as, as it stands. So that will be expected in the coming days on WBTV, on Civic Center TV. And we'll, of course, have that online on CivicCenterTV.com. You can also expect that to be shared from the West Bloomfield School District on their social media as well, uh, courtesy of their, of their public relations manager, Dan Durkin. All right, so that'll be tomorrow. So I've got our wipes here right now. Oh, good. Uh, Thank for those you. of you watching, I, what I think we're going to do, we got just, just a couple of minutes. Down. I'm going to wipe down this area. Yeah, Would you go get Jake Kustoff? And I'll get, yeah, I'll go get Jake Kustache. Go get Jake Kustache, and then let's uh, see if we can just get a minute or two of him to oh, tell us there. what's going on with the uh, with the splash. So, you know, you got to wipe the headphones down and get everything all cleaned up. Excuse me. Come over here and kind of wipe the microphones down and make sure everything's nice and clean. Wipe the area down, and then we're going to have our producer of the splash. Hey, Jake is here. Hi, Jake. How you doing? Hey, how's it going, Dave? Good, 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 good. Let me get you on TV. There you go. I got everything wiped down. Here's some more wipes if you want to wipe a little bit. Jake is the producer of the splash. It is our weekly news magazine, and it is hosted by Brooke Allen. You've been doing a great job, by the way. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you. Uh, tell us what uh, people will be seeing this week in the Splash on Civic Center TV and the coverage that you've been working on uh, surrounding the coronavirus. Oh, well, we got some heavy hitters for stories coming up. We have uh, Chad Ever. He is a businessman that is coming up with a way for restaurants to start doing online ordering. And obviously this time they're making things a little cheaper for people to sign up, and it's right time for companies to sign up for that so So a restaurant that doesn't have a web application for example he's building something to make it easier he's got it or he's implementing it for people and they'll work with them so they can restaurants can start doing online ordering for carry out take out right away well and it worked really good today we we sent our crew over to the sage deli and and we were able to get it curbside too exactly which is even better so people not like stage deli who don't have that set up they'll be able to get that so all right anything else yeah we got um an update from the police department talking about everything going on how they're handling uh the situation and things people should know in the community all right very good so um the splash you and brooke allen and the mm-hmm. rest of our crew doing a really good job we, mm-hmm. it, it's a half an hour news magazine yep. and what do you, what is it you like best for from our viewers standpoint about what they're going to get during that program i always think the interviews are the most uh interesting and they tend to get the most views on youtube as well so i think we get some interesting guests in there they're get pretty entertaining um for everybody to watch uh, this week we got Suzanne Levine is coming on to talk about the chamber and how they're handling the situation and how companies can um, 
take a not take advantage, but uh, work with what they're dealing with right now. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, how would they can survive? Really? Yeah, exactly. I mean, That's it's, the uh, thing. It, it's really all about survival for our businesses. That's a great idea to have Suzanne. She's yeah. a uh, does a great job uh-huh. as uh, the director of our local chamber of commerce, and it'd be good to hear from the business community. Exactly. That's so. what we thought. So. All right, good. Mm-hmm. Okay, I can't shake your hand, but thank you for the hard of work course. you're doing. Our crews, I assume, are being careful in the field, keeping... We're taking a new approach to our splash interviews. We're not micing people up directly. We're going to stay back, keep social distancing, and it's been working out so far great. All right, and then continue to get the information. That yeah, we're and we're also doing video call interviews as well. We're going to start okay. trying those out. So. Yeah, well, we did Zoom here today, yeah. live on, on our broadcast, uh-huh. so it should work out well. Making it work, so... All right, very good. Thank you very much. I'm yep. going to clean your area off there. We'll get Tyler back in here to to wrap this up so uh just as a reminder again um we'll be here every day monday through friday on the weekends if necessary two-hour broadcast trying to highlight the things going on in our community tyler you can wipe up a little bit there before you before you get go make sure you you get a good good clean wipe there with the disinfectant wipes i just gotta wipe all this (laughs) but um we're going to be here. Thank you yeah, for appreciate. understanding. It's going to be a little bit informal, but that's just kind of what we do here. Um, going back and taking a look at today, um, it was really great to have um, our guys talking about Zoom and learn a little bit more about that. We certainly want to thank uh, Pastor Tim Hoserlin for joining yes, us today okay. and talking about what's going on with him, his parishioners, and his thoughts and how things are going at the uh, going on over the fire department. Dee Sloan joined us earlier from yeah. Sylvan Lake with her amazing project, Tyler. No, oh, fantastic! Yeah, have an amazing, amazing project. It's Starting off really well in Sylvan Lake, and hopefully it grows there and uh, all throughout the community. All right. And uh, I don't know if I missed. Oh, of course, and Steve, the guys over at Stage Deli, we got a lunch, which we did curbside, ordered live on the radio, and uh, I think we'll do a lunch every day and do everything we can to promote our businesses. I want to remind you, before we say so long today, to... Uh, Stop it and check this out. This is our Civic Center TV website. You can see the stories that we're working on. There's Jake on the set of The Splash, oh, yeah. reminding you, of course, about Lakes FM radio, reminding you that we are in high definition on cable, all of our coronavirus information, uh, and uh, the state of the communities, which in normal times we'd be focusing on quite extensively right now. Uh, but if you miss the broadcast, clearly no one was there with us live and in person. Um, you can uh, go back and watch that. All of our shows, recent and uh, those over the past several years, are all archived for you to go through. And if you have some extra time right now and you're looking for something to do to fill time and you really care about what's going on in the local West Bloomfield area, a lot of interesting shows, everything from uh, a look back at the West Bloomfield tornado in the 70s to in, insights into Apple Island, and I could just go on and on and on. Uh, our aerial view of our communities and, and much, much more. And, of course, uh, on the right-hand side of the screen, if you can see my mouse, there is the player, the Civic Center TV player, and all you got to do is take that and maximize that, and uh, you will be all set, and you can watch uh, video uh, right there, watch our uh, video content live. So um, that's about all i got. Tyler, any final thoughts for today? Yeah, it was a good show today. We had a lot of interesting interviews. And we'll continue that on uh, throughout the rest of this week and, and going forward on the Megacast. All right. And finally, our vocabulary or our phrases. We uh, will continue to build this library. If you have any other phrases that have come out of this whole crisis. We'll have to, we'll have to, we'll have to test Dr. Hill on this tomorrow. Of course, he's next. He's going to be on, on sure. Friday. So we'll have to test him on that. All right, so if you have anything to add to curbside testing, new normal, pandemic, a symptomatic happy birthday song, fomite transition, social distancing, or flatten the curve, we will... Uh, can we put this list up on the website? We, yeah, we can put it on the website. Yeah, let's here, take that. Put let's that put, yeah, we'll put, oh, don't touch it. Oh, no, no. Oh, oh now i got to <laughs> Take that up <laughs> and clean that up. Oh. Take that, put that oh, up on no. the website, and uh, and then if you want to add anything. We'll for add you- that to civiccentertv.com <laughs> slash coronavirus with the rest of our information. We have all that important information that, that's very scientific and very straightforward. We'll put something a little more lighthearted on there. All the right. Vocab list. All right. Greatly appreciated. The entire crew did a real good job putting together the show. We'll be back here again tomorrow and look forward to uh, to having you with us. Um, 
We have lunch with Larry coming up in just lunch a couple of minutes. Don't forget, we'll be back tomorrow. And uh, we'll be talking to the folks in the West Bloomfield schools and much more about the coronavirus. West Bloomfield Township Board meeting today at 2 o'clock. And uh, Kego Harbor uh, City Council meeting tonight via Zoom, live on Civic Center TV. Uh, if you're listening to one of our replays and it's already happened, I hope you enjoyed them. Um, on behalf of our entire crew, Tyler Keefe, uh, Jake and Ryan and uh, let's see who John Atwater and Ken Cooper and all of our guests. Thank you very much. We will see you tomorrow right around 12 noon. It's time now for Lunch with Larry right here on 89.3 Lakes FM and LakesFM.com.